Bend Around the Wind by Skylia. Chapter 8 The Pirates of the Cassiopeia. They stayed in their hiding place for a long time, long after the ship's engines roared to life and they took off from that wretched planet. He would be lying if he said he didn't give a sigh of relief once they were on their way. Stark was sitting right beside him, their shoulders touching, since there was not much place behind the crates. The human's attention waning. But he was still alert. Loki did not know yet whether he would need him in the disposal of the ship's crew, but it was better to have him ready. He wanted to wait until they were far enough before making his move, but he had no idea how fast the ship was. He would have to guess. How long are we going to stay here? Stark asked very quietly. Eager? Thirsty. Soon. We should be far enough in a little time. How's this going to go then? We move quietly, search through the ship, and kill them. Preferably one by one. Kill them. Stark repeated slowly, and something in his tone made Loki look at him. Yes, kill them. What did you think we were going to do? I don't know. Stark shook his head. But I don't like this. Loki resisted the urge to scoff. He was expecting this sort of sentimentality. This made all those noble heroes so infuriatingly annoying that they let their personal emotions and irrelevant moral codes prevent them from doing what was needed to be done. They refused to make the necessary sacrifices for the greater cause, but always threw themselves into the arms of death. Brave, valiant champions, but as soon as a greater sacrifice was needed, they backed down, hiding behind shields made of false ideas and rules. Fools. All of them. I care not whether you like it or not, Stark. Logi said in a quiet but firm tone. We need this ship, so we will take it. Maybe we could take it without... Without what? You did not seem to mind to kill before. That was different. They held us captive. They tortured us. But the crew on this ship had nothing to do with that. They are not involved. They're innocent. Innocent? How would you know that? Maybe they're all smugglers or thieves and murderers who butcher and rape across the galaxy. Or maybe they're not. You really think that Innocence would use that aerodrome we just came from? That Innocence would bargain and trade with those filthy beasts that inhabit that planet? Would they be welcomed in the docks of a planet in such a shady part of the universe if they would be so very harmless? Are you that naive? Or are you trying to play hero again? Stark stared at him with fierce, angry eyes. Look at it this way, Stark. Loki continued. If we leave them alive, they will take us back, or they alert the other and his men. Maybe they won't. Maybe they would help. Are you really willing to take that risk? He asked. Risk going back there into that filthy hole in the hands of the other. Think. What would happen if you were taken back? How long would it take them to completely break you, to strip away your sanity along with your skin? They will not let you die. You know that. Oh no. Not until you told them all your secrets, sold out your planet, your race, your friends. They would keep you alive for years, if they have to. And in the end, you would even forget who you are. You'd be nothing but a broken puppet in their hands, trembling at their feet, while your world burns. Think about it, Sark. Stark's hands were clenched now, and so were his jaw. His eyes were hard, and he was staring right ahead, his face a cold, hard mask, carefully hiding most emotions. There was a light tremor in his body, but Loki could not tell whether it was the cold, anger, or fear causing it. Are you really willing to take that risk? Loki asked again, slower and more firmly. Stark sucked in a breath through his teeth and clenched his eyes shut. After a long moment, he shook his head, although it looked like it hurt him to do so. Good. At least he would learn from this. Let us go, then, Loki said and got up. They had a ship to take over. The first throat he sliced belonged to a man down by the engines. It was the closest to the cargo area, so they stumbled upon him first. The next two were a little harder to get rid of, since while the first fell without a sound, the second drew a weapon. A lot smaller than the one Stark was carrying, and managed to avoid Loki's first attack. 
Fortunately, he could wound him before he got the chance to shoot, and after he lost his weapon, he fell soon enough. Stark did not do anything, not like he was needed, but Loki was sure that if the situation called for it, he would pull the trigger. He didn't want to be captured again, imprisoned again, and certainly didn't want to give knowledge to the other and Thanos that would endanger so many worlds. One more he killed in what looked like a small kitchen and noted that they would have plenty of provisions, even for a longer journey. Two they found asleep, or at least slumbering, so they went silently enough. Stark looked a little pale, but his face was grim and hard. Loki knew that expression. He would stand by his decision and later battle his guilt. Oh, Stark could feel guilty if he wanted to. It was his own fault that he could not accept a necessity. Another one they ran into on a corridor, and Loki was sure that the crew was already aware that something was not right, even if they did not know what, because this one already had his weapon drawn. Loki could not get to him quickly enough, and he suffered a wound to the leg from the small weapon. He hissed in pain and stumbled, but then another almost silent shot went off, and the man fell from the blast that came from Stark's gun. Finally decided to participate? Loki asked. Shut up. Stark bit out curtly, sending him a rather impressive glare. Loki stood up, and while it hurt to walk now, he was not incapacitated. Finally, they were at the command center, and Loki's estimation about the number of crew members seemed to be proven correct. Inside, they definitely had at least one or two pilots, maybe even a captain or someone else, but there couldn't be more than three or four of them. Only they opened fire at them first, so this did not go so well. On the bright side, it seemed like Stark was more set on surviving than caring about his moral issues for now. One was injured by Stark's weapon, and the other died when Loki finally had a chance to throw his blade. It was hard to aim and make a fine throw with his hands still bound, but he managed just fine. When the third one was shot, they could move in, and Loki retrieved his blade to make sure none of them was alive. Stark dropped his weapon with a heavy clash and leaned to the wall. He dug the heels of his hands into his eyes, breathing heavily. Loki wanted to comment, but decided that it would be unwise to completely alienate Stark when he had need of him. So he let him wallow in his anger or guilt or whatever else that was going through his head. I changed my mind, Stark said after a while. I don't want to be a pirate. Good. I do not really want more ships. Takeovers are so tedious. Tedious. You really are not all right in the head, are you? Stark asked, and Loki froze for a moment, then turned back towards the mortal. I am willing to do what needs to be done. Whatever it takes to survive, Loki told him. Not just noble reasons are good enough to justify the needs to an end. No matter what, lives are ended and the dead do not care about your reasons. Those are only tools to appease your own conscience. So spare me your moral lecture and come here. We need to make sure we're heading in the right direction. Stark stayed silent once in his life and walked up to him to take a look at the controls. Loki was not familiar with technology. Not this sort of technology, at least. All the displays and data and numbers and various graphs meant nothing to him. Stark, on the other hand, looked at all and his eyes immediately turned sharp and calculating. Some of the displays were floating in the air like light transparent illusions, and those were the first ones Stark approached. He reached out with his hands and moved some things on them around. Look at that. I almost feel home again. Meaning... Meaning that I am a genius and heading in the right direction with my own tech. Which really didn't explain anything to Loki. Stark looked over everything again inside. I am way too tired for this. He remarked and rubbed his eyes. Have you ever been on a ship like this? No. Have you? Stark snorted. No. But like I just said, I am a genius. Come here and translate whatever I point at. Loki did not like to be given orders like this, but he didn't comment. They needed to turn the ship in the right direction before they got rid of the bodies. He walked up next to the human. Can you, though? Stark asked. Translate, I mean. I noticed that you always understand, and for some reason you are always understood, but I have a feeling it's not because you're so multilingual. I'll speak. It's not important. I can translate. We should proceed. All right. Stark agreed, not budging for answers. He started pointing at various texts on the display, and Loki read them out loud. It took quite some time. 
When he was done, the human stopped for a moment, just staring at the displays, then reached out and started moving things around on it. What are you doing? Shh! Loki bit back whatever he wanted to reply to that and just watched. Stark kept switching things around, his eyes once in a while sliding over to a second or third display that floated in the air. Then suddenly a fourth one appeared in front of the other three, and Loki didn't need to ask to recognize a star map. So, where are we headed exactly? Stark asked. It does not matter. Somewhere in the Andromeda. Okay, but shouldn't we be heading towards the Milky Way? The what? Milky Way. Our galaxy. Stark said. You call our- Loki stopped and took a breath. You mortals are ridiculous. Why? When you're on Earth and look up, the rest of the galaxy looks like a big, wide, white road across the sky. It's fitting. It's just still the ridiculous name. Whatever. So shouldn't we head towards the Milky Way? Because I'm not sure Andromeda is in the same way. It would be unwise to pick a direct route back towards the our galaxy because if anyone is following us, they will look for us in that direction. Okay, good point. Alternate route, a detour. Yes, besides, I am not sure we have enough water, provisions, or energy to reach Midgard directly. No, you are right about that, Stark said. I know we have to be at least two million light years away, if not more, maybe a lot more. I don't even know how long it would take us to get there. I do not know exactly either, but considering that we have to take a longer route, make multiple stops to restock whatever is needed, fuel maybe. Nah, looks like we have solar panels, Stark said, and then continued to speak when Loki just rounded him. It gathers solar energy, so we only need to get close to a star to get the generators recharged. Huh, I see. Clever, I suppose. You got that from... I may not understand all words, but the pictures are helping a lot. Stark reached for the displays again and moved one point on the star map into another, while a thick blue line stretched out between the points. A small window popped up. Let me guess. It says calculator. Stark said. Yes. Loki frowned again. The blue line turned green once the text vanished. New route set, Stark announced. That was it? Loki asked. Yep, done and done. Stark answered. Well, this was not that hard. There is some sort of autopilot already turned on, so I only needed to change the route, but there's just still too many things about the ship I do not know yet. Nothing detailed about the navigation, or about the life support, or if we have any defensive systems or anything. I don't even know how we're not floating right now in what should be zero gravity. But all this would need at least a few hours of intense work, and I just can't do that right now. Stark ran a hand down his face and took a deep breath. For now, we are heading in the right direction. I could change things up later once I've slept and drank something and ate. Go, Loki said. What are you going to do? Stark asked. I get rid of the bodies, Loki answered. Rotting flesh is not very pleasant. And how are you going to get rid of them? I toss them out into space. Right, of course. Stark looked around, seeming a little lost. You may want to take their stuff. I mean, weapons, keys, ammo, that sort of thing. We might need it. Fine. Seriously, anything that may look useful. I said fine, Sark. Go and rest. We will have a lot of work to do in the next days. I'll wake you if anything happens. Pretty sure you should get some shut eye too, the human told him. In a few hours, Loki answered. You may want to clean up as well. He added with a meaningful tone. Not that he was any cleaner than the human, but he would get to that soon enough. He would get blood on him again very soon, so there was no point yet. Alright, whatever. Stark shrugged, then he grabbed his gun and headed out. Loki stared after him for a moment, then he looked back at the displays that still didn't make much sense to him, despite understanding the words written on them. He frowned again. Hmm... But it didn't matter. He shook his head and turned to the bodies lying around on the floor.